The next group of instruments. with you are the muddle instruments, which we refer to as the heavenly sounds. The first of these is the tuning fork. The tuning fork represents the law of entrainment perhaps better than any instrument. If one fork is stationary and the other fork is struck, it picks up a vibration. Within a short period of time, the resonance from the vibrating fork is transmitted to the fork which is stationary, and suddenly both forks are in harmony, in equilibrium with one another. I met a gentleman some years ago who at the time was the only naturopathic physician in the entire state of West Virginia. According to him, the C and the G forks represented the body's perfect harmonic balance. This particular physician would use these forks at the beginning and conclusion of every healing session. At the start, the forks were taken across the client's body in an effort to calm and allow the mind to clear and empty so that the session could be more profound. At the end of the session, again, the forks were struck. Once more, they were carried through the body, carried through the field, allowing the client to retain the session and allow them to maintain that stillness, that connectedness, and that wholeness. Being a massage therapist, forks also come in quite handily. Everybody has knots in their shoulders, knots in their neck, and knots in their back. Consider what happens with the ocean against the seawall. The seawall appears to be solid and it appears to be strong but the relentless nature of the ocean waves pounding, relentlessly pounding and beating. Ultimately, it helps to soften the seawall and ultimately it knocks the seawall down. It crumbles. So, the water prevails. In a similar context, the tuning fork. It seems subtle. You strike the tuning fork, put it into an area of blockage, into one of the knots, and just allow the vibration to penetrate and dissipate and break down the knot. At the same time, the tuning fork can be utilized in bone tissue. You can put it against a bone such as your elbow. For people that have a fracture or a break, you can utilize the tuning fork. It will help to energize that area, provide additional healing energies, and allow faster acceleration of the healing process. For someone who has undergone heart problems, heart issues, etc., the tuning fork can be struck and again can be placed along the sternum. The reverberation of sound through the sternum through the rib cage helps to affect the lungs and the heart. When the person is able to allow the density to let go and to break down, they're in a better position to allow love to come into their life, and as a result, they're more trusting and willing to love others. Now Michelle will demonstrate tinctures. Hello, and now I'm going to discuss about the tinctures, these small symbols that I have in my hand. These symbols have been used for hundreds of years in the process of meditation to begin and end the practice of meditation. They were originally used by Tibetan Buddhist monks to begin their daily practice. They have a wonderful sound quality to them which is pure and crisp. And as you can hear, the sound lasts for some time. This enables one to be able to focus and clear their minds to have what is known as an empty mind so that one can begin to hear the inner world. The symbols on the tinctures are representative of sacred prayers. So there are symbols along the top and as you ring the chimes, you are effectively sending out those sacred prayers into the universe. And so these tools we use them in our private practice, both to begin and end a session with a client, as a way to restore serenity to their being 
and peace of mind. And now we're going to introduce to you two modern day versions of chimes. This is a double bar chime, and Brian's holding on to a single bar chime, both of which emit crisp, pure sounds that again are useful for meditation practice or for just relaxing one's mind after a busy day. But The double bar chime holds a note for an extended period of time due to the fact that both bars, again, are utilizing the law of entrainment. There is a lower tone on one of the bars and the other rod begins to vibrate to the higher tone once struck simultaneously. And they will sound as if they are beating in unison. That is the acoustic phenomenon that these bars have. The bars are very effective so far as trying to calm down a class before a class begins. Also, they're effective in yoga classes. Begin a class, it brings a class into balance and into harmony, into awareness. Many people can also use the bars to do space clearing in a home, in an office, other environments they may be a part of, even a hotel room, the car, places you might not have even thought about. So again, the bar can be very effective for use, and one can also strike the bar and carry the sound over their body and over their being so it allows self-work and self-healing to be accomplished with the subtle sound of the bar itself and of the tone. So as you listen to the sound, allow yourself just to sink and relax into a deep state of restfulness. These chimes, as Brian said, are very lightweight, very portable. You can take them almost anywhere to enjoy a bit of relaxation after a stressful day. We highly recommend them to clients to purchase them for their personal practice. And now we will proceed with the Tibetan bell. The Tibetan bell actually should be sold in a group of three. The first item is the double dorje or double lightning bolt. This is commonly referred to as a major dispeller of negativity. It represents the male energy Thus, it's being held in the right hand. At the same time, there's a mallet, which will be utilized with a bell itself. And then you have the bell. Effectively, the bell has a handle. The handle in this case represents the male energy, the dorje. The bell of the bell represents the female energy. Thus, it's a blending of the masculine and the feminine into the unity of oneness. Also, around the edging of the bell, just like we had with the tinctures, are various and sundry symbols. Each of these symbols is a representation of prayers. By striking the bell, the symbols are allowed to resonate into the earth, into the ethers, and those prayers are being able to be carried to all that are within range. What happens in playing the bell is you can ring the bell first and then use the mallet. The mallet has the ability of carrying the sound higher and higher frequencies. You can use this, just like the single bar and the double bar chimes, for space clearing. You can also use it for doing a sound scan on a client. Again, it's not like churning butter. You go slow and just lean in and allow the bell to sing. Allow the bell to resonate. It helps to calm the mind and still the mind and allow one to go into a very deep state of relaxation, very meditative, a relaxing space and relaxing state. The next instruments we wish to share are the gong. Everyone has seen gongs in the past, but they don't fully understand what the gong is capable of doing. If you look very closely, the gong has many different undulations for the machining process of making it and creating it. Secondly, the gong, just like the kettle drums and the steel drum, has different notes and certain variations within the surface itself. Very much like the didgeridoo, the gong has the ability of not playing a single note, such as what is struck by playing the piano or chord progression. Instead, the gong develops very rich overtone sounds. Instead of striking the gong in the center, like the kung fu movies, the gong can actually be played for the sake of healing. 
basically creating a cascading wave action. Today you're very lucky to experience tandem or the dual gonging. are again attuned to a particular musical note. Both of these bowls that we are holding here are attuned to the note of E, and that particular note facilitates healing in the solar plexus region. So all of the digestive and emotional centers of the body. We were gonna give you a demonstration of the sound of these bowls. 